Okay, so good afternoon. Is it on? Nope. All right. <laughs> good afternoon. My name is Danita Slade, and I'm with Magnese Financial Aid. Um, today I have with me Ms. Susan Bell and Ms. Courtney East. Um, Ms. Courtney is the Director of Recruiting, and Ms. Susan works in financial aid with me. And today we're going to talk to you about financial aid. Okay, so what is financial aid? Financial aid is funds that will help you pay for your post-secondary expenses. And this comes in the form of scholarships, grants, work study, or loans. So when you think about financial aid, what it pays for, most people only consider tuition, fees, and books. But when you consider how much money you need for financial aid, you should also think about housing, um, your transportation costs, personal expenses, and food as well. So the approximate cost per semester for MACNES is $5,150. Um, some schools have an out-of-state fee. So if you're going out of state, it might be a flat rate. Magnesis is $500 per semester, but you need to check into that when you um, look for different schools, look at different schools. Um, also a room and board. Different, school, different schools have different amounts of room and board costs. So you always wanna do your research and make sure that when you consider how much financial aid you need, how much um, room and board is also, um, this is MacNeese's website, uh, macneseslife.com if you wanna look into how much you want to um, spend. So now we can talk about different sources of financial aid. As far as federal programs, there are Pell Grants, loans, um, supplemental uh, SEOG, which is a grant. Um, there's work study, and also there's the PLUS loan that parents can take out. Um, as far as state funding, there's the GO Grant and uh, TOPS, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. Oh, I should have said, <laughs> some of those funds are also have limited funding. So you wanna be sure to do your FAFSA early so you can be considered for specifically grants and um, work study as well, have limited funding. So if you need more information about TOPS, you can go to mylasfala.gov uh, and um, go and look up TOPS and find out TOPS information. Um, you can get your LASFA ID from your counselor and that will help you log in. <laughs> so for scholarships, it's important to remember that there are scholarships everywhere and your school counselor can help you find different scholarships. And you should also look at the universities that you're applying for, because they have scholarships per school as well. Um, your parents, employers, if you work, your employer might have scholarships. Churches, different organizations as well all have scholarships. For MACNESE, um, in, on our admissions application, you can select that you are, are interested in scholarships straight on that application. And then you can put in your information for what that scholarship might need right there. Um, MacNeese's deadline for academic scholarship is Thursday, uh, th I'm sorry, it is Thursday, December 1st, 2022. Um, so unfortunately there are scholarship scams. Um, so remember that scholarships, fees, you should never pay a fee for a scholarship. Um, don't give out your credit card information. Um, and if you have questions about different scholarships, be sure to go to the actual organization that is providing it 
to get accurate information. So some basic steps for entering this next uh, life experience for you guys would be to review admissions and financial aid websites um, for the universities that you're interested in. You need to meet all deadlines. That includes admissions, creating your FAFSA ID, um, submitting your FAFSA and turning in any documents that your financial aid might ask for. You also want to remember to investigate different scholarships or different sources of aid that you might qualify for. And remember that the FAFSA, you have to renew it every year. Um, October 1st, the FAFSA opens for the next aid year, so you want to apply as soon as possible. So your FSA ID. I know somebody asked about it. Let me get to it. I have a form in your packet. It gives you specific instructions on how to um, create your FSA ID. Um, you can put in your password, the questions that you that they'll ask you to answer. So this is a very good form for you to fill it out. Um, you go to studentaid.gov and basically the student and the parent need a FSA ID. If the parent already has one from a previous sibling, um, they don't need to create a new one. So you apply for your FAFSA on studentaid.gov and it is a free form. Some important information when you do complete your FAFSA, be sure to put your legal name and your social security number. If it does not match, uh, things will kick back. This is a federal form. It goes to a lot of different federal agencies. So if something does not match, it will kick out and it will slow down your aid. Um, so it also will ask you about your citizenship and your grade level and your degree that you are working towards. Although you guys are high school graduates, you are, will go into college as freshmen. Either you can be a freshman, first time freshman, or you can be a freshman with college credits right now. Like if you're doing dual enrollment, I would say. Uh, so you wanna make sure to put that you are entering as a freshman. As far as your degree level, you will be an, going towards your associates or your bachelor's, not your master's just yet. Okay, so you can list up to 10 schools on one application of your FAFSA. And in order to do this, you put in the school that you want, put in the city and state, and it'll pull it up for you. Or if you know the school's code, you can just put that in and automatically populate. Magnesis is 002017. And you must remember to about your cost of attendance. For cost of attendance, you want to do housing. If you're living with your parents, if you're living off campus, on campus, all of that is calculated in the cost of attendance. This form right here that y'all have in y'all's packet is basically a mock campus cost calculator. So if you want to like say, go to Magnes, you can put these uh, numbers in just to see about how much age you might need. So it's a good form just to fill out, play with. Okay, so to determine if you're a dependent or independent student, if you answer uh, yes to just one of these questions, you are considered an independent student. If you answer no to all of them, you are a dependent student. That means your parents' information has to be recorded on your FAFSA. So who is considered your parent when, when regards to the FAFSA? If your parents are um, divorced um, or remarried, 
the parent and step parent that you live with, they have to go on the FAFSA. If you are, if your parents legally adopted you, they would go on your FAFSA. If your parents are divorced, not living together, whoever supports you 50% of the time, that is the parent that you need to list on your FAFSA. You cannot list any grandparents, foster parents, legal guardians, or older siblings that might support you. Um, other information that you'll need to fill out your FAFSA would be your taxes from 2021 and asset information and untaxed income. We use the 2021 taxes because uh, the FAFSA goes off a prior, prior year. Most people have not done their 2020 taxes. The 2021s usually are available. That's why we use those. So the IRS data retrieval tool is the easiest way to pull in your tax information. Um, it pulls it straight from the IRS, straight to your FAFSA. You do have to make sure you put your information exactly how you put it in on your tax return or it won't pull in. So some tax filers who cannot use the IRS DRT are those that have just recently gotten married. Um, if you put your, um, if you don't have a valid social security number, um, if you indicate you hadn't done your taxes just yet, um, and basically if you have a ze all zeros for your social security number or your parents do. We do understand that there are special circumstances that might have occurred since 2021. So a parent might have lost a job, your parents' marital status might have changed. So in those instances, you need to talk to your financial aid office and tell them what's going on so we can consider taking into what your picture is currently. Um, different universities handle these situations differently but you need to make sure to talk to your financial aid office about it. So some errors that you might, might have on your FAFSA is your social security number. Like I said, if it's not in there, it will kick it out. Um, if you don't put in correct tax information, looks fishy, it'll kick it out. Um, asset information, household size, all of that sort of, it, it will cause an error and the financial aid office will have to verify it and we'll have to ask for more, more documentation. So um, I guess I've started, I already said this, but um, when the, the, uh, the schools get your FAFSA, when you complete your FAFSA, you get a student aid report. It has all the questions you answered, all the schools that you put on your FAFSA. If you made a mistake, you can go and see it. If you did, you can go back in to studentaid.gov, make your correction, and it'll come back to the school. When the schools get your FAFSA, we get it, and it goes through a process called verification. Um, if we need further documentation, we will email you, so it is important that you put in a personal email address, not your Calcasieu Parish school email address, because once it's inactivated, we can't get in touch with you. Um, so please watch for notifications through your email because that is how the schools will contact you. Um, there is also a policy that we have, it's called FERPA, which prohibits us from talking to anybody but the students about their information. August is our busiest time, so please get your stuff in early because once you're in August, uh, the chances of you getting your aid on time before school, before school starts is really slim because we're, we're working really hard to get everybody in. Um, some dates to remember, are, uh, it's May 1st, is our federal uh, aid priority deadline. 
So what this is, is when, if you have all your documentation done, your FAFSA turned in, um, the likelihood of you getting your aid before school starts, or at least an award letter that tells you what your aid is and you can decide on what you want, you'll have that. And you know October 1st, our FAFSA opens, it's already open. So if you haven't completed it, go out and do it. And the priority date uh, for state aid is July 1st. So that is for your tops. Um, so Student Central is doing Tackle College Thursdays. So this is where you can get one-on-one -on -one help either doing a FAFSA ID or filling out your FAFSA. You just need to bring in your information and our Student Central specialists will help you fill out your FAFSA with you. Um, also, our Student Central, they will be able to answer questions if you have about admissions, scholarships, financial aid, it's pretty much our one-stop shop. Um, and it has the phone number, you can get their phone number and email address, and you can call, walk in, whatever, and they'll be able to either answer the question or get you to the right people who can answer the question. Um, so you can go to MACNEY's website, and you can type in Student Central page, or you can go to the financial page if you have other questions that I haven't covered today. Um, we also have a Facebook page, a financial aid Facebook page that we pretty much keep updated regularly. So um, go ahead and like us and any information that we update, you'll be able to see. And that is pretty much the end. So do you have any questions? Student Central is located on the corner of McNeese and Ryan Street. Um, it's in Chosen Hall, but it's the big building and it has Student Central right on the uh, corner. 